Hi there, this is Barbie Wild, female Cenobite from Hellraiser 2 and author of The Venus Complex. You're listening to WithoutYourHead.com. All right, welcome to the station of decapitation without your head. I am Nasty Neal. And this is Annabelle Lecter. And we are joined by Blair Richardson, director of the short horror film Kitty Kitty, among other things we'll be talking about. How are you doing? I am fantastic. I'm so excited to finally talk to you all. Yes. I know it's been a quite a while since uh since this whole thing started. This <laughs> I trip know. towards you actually being here. What what has been the progression? I know one week I was sick and then we were supposed to get you on with the troll people and then there was a flight thing. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I think uh the first two times it was y'all and then the third time it was me. So it was bound to happen, though. I think both parties wanted it to happen, but the powers that be were not allowing it. So, mm-hmm. but <laughs> but you were it is what it is. Yeah, exactly. So, but yeah, I was uh, pretty fucking bummed. Oh, and my lad. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. It's a good time to ask. What you want? This is a filthy, disgusting show. Don't worry about it. Yeah, we were a little worried about uh, some of the troll, uh, the troll guests last week, uh, last show. I don't think any of the people that that uh, are friends with them are listening. They are were very uptight. Yes. (laughs) Were they? Uh They they were very friendly. So we said just to let you know, you can say anything you want. We swear. We didn't get into detail, but we said, you know, we swear, so no big deal. And there was kind of like a stunned silence. Uh huh. (laughs) Yeah. Well, what they were were hard to listen to is just a little. I think they were a little taken aback. George Hardy seems kind of like a. A goody two shoes, maybe. So yes. maybe he just doesn't swear in general. I don't, mm. I don't know. I think that's what it is. That they were both was, very friendly, though. They were very friendly to you. <laughs> well, I don't work blue. I'm a very clean cut man. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> but anyway, well, we're not talking about troll two people. No. We can talk about that in a little bit. Let's talk about you first, Blair. Yeah. So you've yeah. got a project. Very exciting. Must be very exciting for you. So I'm very excited. Yeah. Um, well, what do you want to know? <laughs> do you want to know? Well, the tell us a little bit about what the project is, about why they would uh, be interested in tuning into it. Sure. Um, so the project you speak of, I would assume, is Kitty Kitty. And yes. it's a short horror film uh, that was shot... Uh, in Jacksonville, Florida, uh, throughout 2012 and 2013. It was about a year and a half in the making. We started last July, which is when I wrote wrote the thing, and then we got uh, funding for it through Indiegogo um, from people all over the world. And we're very grateful to everybody. We, we ended up actually receiving uh, twice what we asked for. Um, wow. So that was that was very humbling, and and I, I could have never thought that a, a little girl from Florida that wanted to make a monster movie would would receive so much excitement and and uh, support from people. And um, so yeah, and then we uh, we started shooting, and 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 essentially what happened was the. If for for anybody that doesn't know, Kitty Kitty is a, is a creature film. So, so uh, what that means is we we built a, a full foam latex creature suit. And if you don't know what that means, if you're familiar with like or or any type of Pan's Labyrinth, any of those type of films, those are all creature suits. Those are all actors with uh, with uh, I think a good character. example is in Legend, Tim Curry. Tim Curry doesn't look like that in real life. Okay, yeah, in Darkness, muscles, that's a very good anything. example. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And and Rob Teen did the makeup for that, and he's a god among men. So, too bad he was doing I would hire him in a second. Or I would hire him. That would be a dream to hire a good team. But anyway, uh, yeah, so... so uh, so, but but wait, but what happened was is 
we we start to shoot and we we get all our we go we do all our days and and it goes very well. But then our when we get to the creature day, uh, it basically doesn't go well, and I had to make the very unfortunate decision to postpone the shoot uh, because the the creature was just not up to par, and it was one of the toughest things I've ever had to do. But in hindsight, it was the right thing to do. And we ended up getting a much better film out of that decision. But at the time, <laughs> it was very scary. It must have been uh, devastating because so, any creature is a big part of whatever you're doing. It That's was like very the hard. The pinnacle of, of, of whatever it is, the monster is a big reveal. Yeah, it was very, very hard. So... Um, what we did was we basically went back to the drawing board and, uh, you know, decided to go at it again. And with as much gusto as we did the first time, which is a really a testament to the crew that I, I worked with, um, Devin McDonough and Nicholas Lane were both the uh, key special effects artists on the project. And they just, you know, from start to end, they just, I mean, they were warriors. They just rocked that shit and uh, really put in their all. And and the first suit and the second suit, they did everything that they could have possibly done. You know, doing practical effects and why it's so not really used so much anymore is because it's just plain hard work. It's just yeah. super hard to do. And I know that was really important to you, and it's something that you've been promoting during the whole making of uh, of this Kitty Kitty. Yeah. Because, I mean, it, it obviously it means a lot to a lot of us that people would bother to spend the time and put the effort into using practical effects. Yeah, that's absolutely right. I mean, you can uh, what makes good film to me or good art in general is the passion behind it. And you definitely have to have a lot of passion to pursue practical effects. Because it's just, it takes that much energy. I mean, it's, it's, it's insane. Really, it's just insane, uh, the amount of work that goes into it. You talked about, but, uh, uh you, you go on. I'm sorry. No, go ahead. I was say, uh, you know, you talked about Indiegogo and, you, you know, it was, uh, it's humbling that all those people uh, donated and, you know, you got to make your project. Was that also a lot of pressure added to you once, once you got the, the funding for it? Like, now I have to make this? Hello? Up until then. Yep. No. Right. Okay. You know, music, but I. Um. Uh, <laughs> If Blair is talking, I don't. I cannot hear anything anyone is saying. Yeah. Uh oh. Blair, you're getting out on our end. Cause I was. Uh -oh. I thought it was my uh, technological issues, but. Hello. It could be. Hello. 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 Yes. We hear you. <laughs> oh, you can. Mm -hmm. Right now, yes. Yes. Okay. All right. Uh, we'll start you here. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> oh yeah, you're going in and out. Oh man. Say it ain't oh, no. so <laughs> No. Uh can you hear me now? <laughs> yes. All right. Um all right, well we'll just try it until can't do it anymore. Um okay. or I'll call you back or something. Uh anyway. So go, yes, go. it was pressure. it was an enormous amount of pressure because I've never had to do anything artistically for anybody else before. So whether it was whether it's playing guitar or making movies, which is the only thing artistically I know how to do, um, I was only ever doing it to my for myself. I never was expected to do it for anybody else. So having people donate money for a project. Uh, your your bar is set a lot higher for yourself, which inevitably is a lot of fucking pressure. 
So, <laughs> and when you're in complete charge, because I was the writer, director, and producer, which is the trifecta of just total fuck sets, um Yeah, it's, it is a lot of pressure. So, <laughs> um, but it's also it's also really good because me personally, uh, I work I work best under pressure and. I uh, I get things done a lot quicker when I'm, I'm expected to do 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 something um, at a certain time or et cetera, you know. So well, it must have been a really good preparation for you to go forward because, of course, you're going to do more. So how do you feel? Yeah. In, it must have had a huge impact from, like you were saying, being before just kind of doing what you wanted to do, and now, what do you think you're going to take from this? and bring forward in terms of people's expectations and what you ask for and what you think is expected? Uh, well, I feel like I could conquer the world now. <laughs> That's uh, awesome. uh, the, the Kitty Kitty was, I didn't go to film school, uh, mm-hmm. or like university. I went to Douglas Anderson School of the Arts, but I don't really count that because it was high school. But, um, yeah, so I, I, uh, uh I make. I think Kitty Kitty was my real life film school, mm-hmm. and uh, I feel really lucky that I I got that opportunity to to do that and learn learn the hard way, basically, and. Um, Hold on one second. No problem. Um, anyway, so, sorry, I'm actually driving right now. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> so, anyway, yes. Uh, to answer your question, I feel super lucky that I got the opportunity, and I, I'm actually trying to do a feature next year. Which, if I hadn't done Kitty Kitty, um, I, I would have not felt ready. And now, I feel super ready. Like, like I said, I feel like I could take on the world. And only, and it wasn't the film itself; it was all the obstacles I had to overcome to finish the film. And that's the only reason. So, so did you have that? This uh, you, you're talking about having a feature. It sounds like a feature length film. Was that already something that was in the works as you were doing Kitty Kitty? No. Because it's kind of, no. I, so how did that come about? Um, well, it's in the works now, and I, I can't really talk about it too much. But mm-hmm. um, essentially, uh, a friend of mine. Uh, in Jacksonville uh, directed me towards his friends and he had a script and long story short the script got around to my friend who actually um, was involved in Kitty Kitty he presented it um, Jason went out of Atlanta he's a writer director producer and he really liked it so him and I are kind of trying to collaborate and do something next year. Um, but that's pretty much all I can say until something like official was, you know, until contracts are signed. You can and let, us, uh, let us know if you want to come back. You can update Absolutely. us on that as well. Absolutely. Um, it'll definitely be, I can say that it's going, if it does actually happen, which cross my fingers because it'd be badass, um, it's going to be creature feature. It's going to have practical effects. Uh, it's going to be awesome naturally so it'll be a lot of fun I can say that for sure and, and it won't actually be uh, it'll be a horror film but it'll be more in the vein of of trauma-esque type stuff mm-hmm. yep. so uh, so it's going to be a lot of fun I I'm going to do my best to make it a lot of fun. So. <laughs> what were some of the movies yeah. that uh, inspired you to uh, want to make movies? Uh, 
Uh, absolutely, hands down, Suspiria, uh, Dario Argento is a huge influence. How old were you when you saw that movie for the first time? Oh, God. Um, I think I was 16 the first time. But I was really stoned, and I don't remember it the first time. <laughs> but when was the first <laughs> time that it mattered? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hi, this is Jill Six, and you're listening to WithoutYourHead.com. All right, and we are back once again, and we're still joined by Blair Richardson, I hope. Maybe not. Maybe. <laughs> yep, hello. Hello, hello, okay. yes. <laughs> hey. Hi. Mm-hmm. Hey. Yeah. I'm still here. Yeah, so Annabelle actually... Um, she had discovered uh, First Aid, and uh, that's how uh, I originally heard about uh, your projects. And uh, Annabelle, would you like to talk about First Date? Because yeah, I know you were really, really big uh, on it. I found this pretty much at random. I don't even know how it wasn't something someone sent me. It was just something I stumbled across on, on Facebook. And I, I watched it really having no idea what I was getting into. And it was at, I was super impressed. Uh, I think a lot of shorts just don't have the impact it does. It was a total surprise. Um, I think even if I had even a clue about who you were, I would still not expect this to happen. Uh, it was just great. It was real brief. I think it was not really more than, much more than five minutes. I think it was three minutes. minutes. About three minutes. Yeah, it was very yeah, it's, brief, it's, like, and it's great. It's three minutes on the dot, yep. Yeah. Which it's is so funny good because... because uh, I feel like so okay. many people try to try to take up space and they end up making things a lot longer than they should be. And it, it just went to the point and it went to the point in a, in a, in a great way. There was a lot of buildup and then I just thought it was excellent. Um, so anyone who hasn't seen that, oh, that could you so called first date. I really loved it. And that's how I ended up getting to know you is because I was really impressed by that and wanted to talk with you way back then. Um, so you start out with that. As far as I know, what have you done anything that you've published publicly before that? I'm, I'm sorry, say that one more time. Did you do any work uh, that you published publicly before first date? Yes. Um, yeah, I've been doing this for seven years. Uh, production work. Uh, so yeah, I've uh, I've been involved in lots of different types of projects, uh, anywhere from documentaries to feature films. Um, I shot kind of my big break, quote unquote, was uh, when I was 19. I got a gig to be the camera operator for a feature film. And that later got distributed by Warner Brothers, so that's in Walmart and on Netflix and all that kind of stuff. Um, and then, uh, you know, I've done music videos that are public, uh, you know, uh, public service announcements and all kinds of just crazy. I was doing a documentary about body modification, and that's actually kind of what... Uh, pushed me to do horror films with that documentary because I ended up going to San Francisco for that and mm-hmm. that trip kind of crashed and burned and I had an epiphany while I was there it's like Blair why are you trying to do all these different types of of genres when really all you want to do is horror movies so while I was there at a little coffee shop on the bay I just wrote first date and the day I got back from from California, uh, my my friend Devin, who also did the effects for Kitty Kitty, I was just like, hey, can you make a demon? And he was like, yeah. So we then we made that in two weeks. We made first date in two weeks. Wow. It's, so, it's really good. So what's the difference between so doing something like that that just comes out really quick and something like Kitty Kitty, which you've you know, taken a lot more time to developing? You have speaking roles in Kitty Kitty, which there's no speaking role whatsoever in first date. Um, yeah, I'm, I mean, they're just different projects. Uh, you know, I, I wanted to... Yeah, I've always wanted to do creature suits. I mean, it's been a dream of mine. Um, I didn't even know it was possible to, to even 
I didn't even know that was an option. You know, I thought that was total Hollywood. Um, and as far as the story and everything, Kitty Kitty's just a lot more personal than for mm-hmm. State was. For State's cheeky and it's kind of funny. It's not even really horror. Uh, I want to make horror movies and I was really trying to, to do something that was a lot deeper. Do you think- I, I think for, I think for States, uh, from beginning to end is a really solid story, but it's really on the surface, in my opinion. Do you think uh, Kitty having... Kitty? Mm-hmm. Go on. I'm sorry. I was just saying. Do you uh, think? Kitty... Uh... Yeah, go on. Sorry. <laughs> I was just saying, Kitty Kitty's Kitty a lot deeper for me. Like it took it took a lot more to develop those characters and and uh, that story and that plot. So. Yeah. Do you think having first date uh, out there for people to see helped uh, helped get uh, interest in Kitty Kitty because they could see a, a, a short film that you did make, and uh, you know if you had uh, people behind you, you can make something even longer. Absolutely, absolutely. People really love first date. I mean, it just hit eighteen thousand views on YouTube in a little less than a year, or a little over, a year, or just the at a year, I think. Um, 18,000 views, and uh, it's all over the internet. People tell me all the time, oh, I saw this on Tumblr, oh, I saw this on Reddit. Uh, it's still getting reviews, it's still getting invited to festivals, and like I said, it was just kind of a weekend warrior project where me and a bunch of my buddies were like, you know, let's, let's do this. And uh, I think my passion for horror movie making was solidified with that piece. And uh, I feel really grateful that that I was able to do that that uh, project because I, I don't think if I had done that a year and a half ago, I would I would have made Kitty Kitty and now trying to make this feature. So I mean I owe a lot to First Date. <laughs> I really do. The last How time was we transitioned from having a, a just no lines, no speaking roles at all, until having a cast that has to. I mean it's really just a couple of people, but now they're talking and now you have to kind of prompt them to do things the way you want. Such, yeah. Uh, you know, not like it's a long, long piece, but it's enough that you've really got to make sure that they're on the ball with what you want. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's, it's a lot different and uh, dialogue is one of the big ones. Uh, first date's part of a music video and, um, you know, I had I had some filmmaker peers kind of ridicule me because I was getting a lot of praise for first date, and they they're like, "Well, you haven't made you haven't directed something with dialogue yet." And I was like, "Okay, well, I guess I'll do that next." <laughs> mm-hmm. And uh, you know, but I always kind of bite off more than I can chew, and I I either swallow it or I I don't, but I I usually mm-hmm. swallow it. <laughs> um, no sexual in the windows there, but um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but Kitty Kitty was like I said, it was a lot more personal. I mean, a lot of those things uh, have actually happened to me in my in my life, and mm-hmm. uh, I'm not going to say which. Uh, not not a creature hasn't ripped something out of me. I don't like to give away the ending because a lot of <laughs> it still hasn't gone. It still hasn't gone public yet, so a lot of people haven't seen it. You're really only like two of of three hundred people that have seen it, which isn't a very many. So, uh, yeah. So we're we're doing the festival circuit now, so we're kind of waiting to hear back from some festivals. But uh, yeah, um, it was it was really difficult, and I wasn't really I wasn't working with uh, real actors. They were. There were people that, uh, well, Madison Ray Stewart, she's, she is kind of an actress, but she, I've known her since high school, and I've always just been fascinated by her beauty and her personality, and uh, she was actually cast as a creature first, and when we, we did our reboot um, and we switched things around, I felt like she would be a better Vanessa character, so... Um, cause our original lead, Kimberlea, she actually ended up having to move to California, um, midway through our reboot. And, oh, wow. uh, yeah. So, I mean, it's cr- like all the things that happened during the shoot is insane. I mean, I can't even, 
I looking back or thinking back on it now, I can believe like I aged five years doing the yeah. project. But it really um, tested your metal as far as what you can do. Absolutely. So yeah. I'm sure that was great because if you just breezed through it and then moved on to something else, it'd probably just hit you in the face. You have no idea what was going on. That's right. Yeah. I mean, like I said, I feel like I conquered the world. And um, so, what's a, the response? A lot of that is, what's yeah. the response been like uh, for the other people who have uh, seen Kitty Kitty? So far, so good. Um, most people are just really impressed with with the idea. Like they just know everybody. And the biggest compliment I've gotten thus far is it's an original idea. And mm-hmm. that's really hard to do, you know, especially yes. making a horror film. I mean, it's hard not to cross the same tropes over and over and over again. And um, I, I try really hard in my work to to combine, uh, you know, themes and, and try and, you know, mix up something new. But, yeah, most people are really... Uh, pleased by it and they enjoy it. Um, when we did our cast and crew screening in Jacksonville, Florida, uh, I didn't I didn't expect anybody to show up. It was on a it was a Friday the thirteenth, of course, and mm-hmm. it was kind of late notice. But three hundred fifty people showed up for our cast and crew screening, and the energy there was palpable. It was everybody was just happy and excited and, and and impressed really and um, 90% of my of the cast and crew was there and everybody was just glowing it was really great so, are, you, are you looking forward to uh, seeing it at the festivals amongst uh, the rest of the crowd oh yeah I, I love I love watching the crowd we did a screening um uh, Two weeks ago, for uh, my friend's company, Crush Black, she had an event, a new screen there, and I, I always kind of stand to the side or the back so I can watch watch the crowd's reactions. And um, I was up, I was on the side, and it was one of the best reactionary screens we've done because everybody was just like super boisterous about it and. And uh, it was great. And what I really love to see is when girls put their faces into their boyfriend's shoulder or they, like, grab them mm-hmm. in his hand. That's really awesome. <laughs> I really enjoy that. Yeah. What is it about uh, creature movies that, that you enjoy? Made you want to make a creature film? Well, I just, I've always admired the art form. And... Uh, it's kind of like music for me. I've always admired musicians and and guitar players. So I've always tried to be a rock star, and I've always admired special effects artists. So the closest I can get is directing with them. So uh, you know, like uh, Rob Bottin, Greg Nicotero, you know those guys. They're just like the things that they can create. Uh, organically, it just blows my mind. And uh, like like you said, legend earlier, um, the special effects artist on Kitty Kitty, Devin McDonough, uh, Darkness was his favorite character and uh, special effects creation. And with merit, I mean, it's just so impressive, you know. Um, I'm just really it, it, in awe. By, by the art form of it. That's really all it is. What are some of your favorite creatures from uh, previous films? Um, I like all of uh, Guillermo del Toro's stuff. Uh, you know, Pan Zabras and Ape Sapien and that kind of those kind of characters. Um, Darkness is a big one. The Thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's not really creature creation, but practical effects for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, Predator and uh, definitely Alien. Um, the chest, the chest burster scene. Uh, even though that's not a creature, but the chest burster scene 
uh, mm-hmm. is forever burned into the, the front frontal lobe of my mind as just mm-hmm. one of the most perfect practical effects scenes in movie history. Um, and uh, it's kind of, I, I felt I kind of got goosebumps on set when we did the creature scene for Kitty Kitty because I kept going back back to that scene. I was like, wow, is this what Ridley Scott felt like when he did the chapter 15? Because I feel fucking awesome uh, ripping this thing out of Madison right now. So, And it was funny because I was like right over her, like kneeling right over her. And then the, the cinematographer, Peter Stahl, was like right behind me. And then she's lying on the floor and then Boyd Cox, the creature, is like on the other side. And I'm just like, wow, I was so in the moment epic and awesome. Um, yeah, and then, of course, feature film Black Lagoon, Zach, uh, which was actually made in Jacksonville, Florida, which is the last uh, creature. So Kitty Kitty is the first creature suit since Zach to be created um, since 1971. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. pretty cool. Um, so. You said you but, Yeah, I mean... Uh, you said you didn't go to film school. Uh, how did you even get uh, you know, started in, uh, in in making these uh, uh, short films? Um, well, I, I went to Douglas Anderson, which is an art school in Jacksonville, Florida, and I went for. I started out at theater, and uh, it's super intense uh, the school, and I, I, I was just the fun was kind of beat out of it for me. So I was like, well, I'll just try my hand at film. And they had a film program, and uh, I went there, and it just, I don't like being told what to do. <laughs> I'm very defiant, <laughs> and um, they were, you know, they were telling us what to make, and I, I genuinely have always wanted to make horror movies, and we weren't really allowed, we weren't really given the freedom, truly, uh, I don't feel to make anything we wanted. Like, I couldn't have made Kitty Kitty in high school, please. So, mm-hmm. I ended up dropping out of high school and uh, kind of fucked around for a while. But um, while I was in high school, um, one of my friend's fathers um, privately opened a production house. And I worked with them for a while. And um, we produced and created... A, environmental and political uh, doc- mini documentaries and actually the first one we ever did was about global warming and we got nominated for an Emmy in 2007 for that um, and that was when I was 15 years old so like I said I just been I kind of just fell into it really I mean but I've just been doing it for so long and uh, you know like I said I got that gig the opportunity to do uh, camera operating when I was 19. Um, and, you know, I was, that opportunity with your friend's dad must have really made you feel like you basically like you could do all these different things. Cause uh, I, you know, the vast majority of people that get into this stuff, they don't, they're not 15 and being involved in major awards like that. So it sounds like you really, like you're saying, you fell into it, but you had a push behind you, too, to make you feel confident about it. Absolutely. I mean, I've, I've, I've been super lucky with the opportunities I've been given and the support I've had. I mean, I, I am... New, and then the friends that I have, I mean, uh, they've pushed me, too. I mean, a bunch of my friends are in, in the industry, and they're doing very well for themselves and, and, you know, they push me harder too, uh, with their su- successes and strengths, you know, it makes me want to be better. But, uh, yeah, my dad, uh, but it's literally been in my life, my, my entire life. Cause my dad was uh, the news director, a news director for 35 years or however long. And there's always cameras in the house and, I was making claymations and, and stop motions and, uh, and I was actually making little horror movies with like chopped up watermelon and body parts and shit. So, uh, 
Yeah, I've, I've literally been doing it my whole life. It's kind of funny. So, um, yeah, but um, as far as, like, actually trying to professionally make horror movies, that didn't start until, like, two years ago. Mm-hmm. Wow. So. Well, it seems like you're doing very well so far. I hope, I guess. I, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I... I can always do that. I mean, I'll never be as good as I can be until I die. So, you know. Last time we uh, talked to you very briefly, you said uh, you might have some big news for us about, uh, I believe, a uh, magazine. Uh, can you yeah, share that I was you know. advised not to say anything. <laughs> <All right. laughs> um, by, uh, by, uh, by somebody you spoke to the last time. Mm-hmm. Um mm-hmm. So she said not to say anything, so I'm going to take her advice. But uh, I will tell both, I'll tell both of y'all uh, in private when we oh. get off here. Because it is it's pretty fucking awesome. Hmm. But I want to stay and, publicly. Like yet. I was saying, you can come on and promote your upcoming piece, and then you can always tell us about it in the future. Yeah, absolutely. It is It is cool. Okay. If it actually happens, then it's, it's going to be We're really, gonna have to talk- really exciting. Yeah. And it would probably yeah. only take about uh, three months of trying to call into the show for it to uh, to, to work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> and everyone... I, I am really sorry. Let me just apologize really quick for it move any further. Like, I am so bummed about not talking to the full few people, like, and just bummed in general about not talking to you guys, so... I'm really excited to finally talk to y'all. Yeah. Really. Yeah, it's been great. Lots of information. I mean, your your beginnings are really interesting. And it, it's nice to hear that you're able to really go forward with a lot of success and a lot of hope. And I'm very, very interested to see what you'll... I mean, obviously, this is where your life is going. This isn't going to stop, so... I'm looking forward to seeing what you're going to make in the future. I don't, I don't think so. You've got too much support and too much passion. Thank no you way. So Something much. would have to stop you. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully not a car crash. <laughs> no, no, no. No, no, no. <laughs> nice, nice look Hopefully out here. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, like, like writing about, uh, writing about death all the time, like, cause I'm, co- I'm constantly thinking about that kind of stuff. So it mm-hmm. forces me to think about my own mortality, <laughs> like all the time. So, which I think everybody does, but I don't know. I feel like my mind is always there. So I'm always just keep in mind you're gonna have to make something really good because every creative person makes something really good before they die. (laughs) (laughs) At least you got that going for you. Uh That's what I'm saying. That's why I'm gonna live forever because I just make a bunch of crap. I'll make that that one good film and then I'll die. People aren't allowed to take you out or anything like that until you get really big. And then yeah, you're, you go yeah. down in history. Set you in stone. <laughs> That's my hope for the future. To be See, killed? you guys are like trying to avoid it. I'm ready. Take me out. Just wait until I'm big. Don't take me out before my time. Sure. It'll, well, at least I have until I'm 27. Because that's when all the greats go. You know? You know, that's interesting. I was going to mention that, too. You're very young. You're very young to be doing all this stuff. How old are you? I just turned 23. Yeah, I mean, not that age, you know, age to a degree does not matter, but that's a lot under your belt, and you know this for such a young age. I mean, again, that's something to really, I have no doubt you're going to do well. I'm sure a lot of people think that, really. It's it's, it's either or. No, I'm just kidding. (laughs) (laughs) See, they're going to do really well or you suck. No, I'm just joking. No, pretty much everybody's super, super supportive. And I, like I said, I feel really lucky. I just, I feel really lucky to to, to, to have all that. Uh, maybe. I don't know. I just really like horror movies. I, I think that's all it comes <laughs> down to. I, I just I really like horror movies. That's what really goes with. If you're, if you're out there to make a million dollars or impress people and stuff like that. I feel like those are the people that kind of fall apart and uh, yeah. get, or get bitter about stuff. I think it's really the people who have a, a genuine passion that just enjoy yeah. what they're doing. That's the kind of person that's going to get somewhere. 
Yeah, well, those are the people that are more likable, anyway. Yes. Um, those, are, those are the people I gravitate gravitate yep. towards. Um, and and lucky for me, all the people that I, I get to work with, for the most part, are those type of people. And uh, there's a... She's actually here with me now, but she's not in the room. Um, Morgan Wilson, who's the artist that painted the creature suit. Um, mm-hmm. She's probably the most passionate human being I've ever met in my life. Uh, <laughs> she painted that suit in less than 48 hours by hand um, on very few um, inspirational words that I had to give her. And she made it. I mean, you guys have seen it. It's, yes. It's. I mean, that was painted by hand. And that actor was six foot four. So that's how much space she had to cover front to back and side to side. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, she just blows my mind. That's her capabilities. Blows my mind. So... We're going to put up the up on the website uh, so we can check it out, facebook.com slash kitty kitty film. And uh, yeah. are there any, uh, do you know of any uh, upcoming um, places people will be able to uh, see the film? Uh, no, I mean, right now, like I said, it's just, it's the festival circuit, and, but all the information will be coming out on the Facebook page as to where people can see it. Uh, hopefully we'll get uh, on to some website like SpearNet, Wink Wink, or something mm-hmm. like that. Um, but we'll see. But like I said, it'll be all that info will be on Kitty Kitty page or my page, um, Miss Moonchild at Facebook.com. Um, can people follow you on Twitter? Yeah, but I don't even. Yeah, director, director slash. I'm not a big fan of Twitter there. either, but yeah. It, Twitter, Twitter kind of sucks. It's one of those things you make because people make them. It's like what yeah, I just it's not, <laughs> I don't ever go on there. I don't ever go on there. I don't have anything to say. Like I feel, I feel like a jackass when I go on there because everybody's like super clever and witty. I'm just kind of like, <laughs> what the fuck do I say? Like, feeling from each other. They just yeah, I just. Yeah, I mean, it's like, it's either you're saying something witty or you're whacking someone off. And I'm just like, I don't have time for either of those things, so. <laughs> I'm going to start going more often now. Well, forget, forget Twitter, just look for her on Facebook. Right. Yeah, yeah, just, I, I'm on Facebook way more than any other social networking site. Like, Facebook's my jam. I recently got an Instagram, and I've been kind of doing that. Because I'm a first-time iPhone user, so I kind of went a little little iPhone crazy. Yeah, I just got but, a smartphone myself this year for the first time, and it is fun to play with the Instagram. I don't know how the how the hell I did how I lived without an iPhone for so long. I don't know how I did it, but first world problems, first world problems. <laughs> uh, yeah, but um, yeah, I have an Instagram now, which is Miss Moonchild too. So if you want to see sexy pictures. <laughs> things like that um yeah well well, thank you for coming on tonight it's been a lot of fun to finally uh to finally do this i thank you so much i appreciate it um both y'all are really awesome and um annabelle i really am glad that you found first date and that was able to we've been able to stay in touch for so long so thank you it's been great. It really has. And you, you uh, showed us to Stacy as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hot mess threads. Yeah, she's yep, awesome. She's great. Mm-hmm. She's great. She is. She's going to make yeah. me a bib. <laughs> uh, in what style? <laughs> is it going to be... I want a horror bib to oh, wear yeah. on uh, dinner and a movie, our video mm-hmm. series, and uh, I'm always trying to oh, find right. new ways to embarrass Annabelle in public. And I think wearing an adult <laughs> bib while we uh, eat will will be a, a I'm fine all about addition. the bib. I tease you about dropping food on yourself all the time. You huh. need a bib. But do you know? I think I know what you need a bib. It's like one of those kids' bibs that flips up. Yeah. Like how about how about a Zubaz bib? Nice, nice. That'd be sweet. Blair's That's probably awesome. lucky enough to not know what Zubaz is. Yeah. Yeah, she's probably born after Zubaz was around. So. I'd say yes. <laughs> Fortunately, for her. yeah. Wait, uh, I'm not gonna ask how how old y'all are, but I do I do the 
quite often because it tends to blow people's minds. I was born in 1990. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. usually when I show up, people, yeah. <laughs> People are like, what? Yeah. <laughs> I was a I was a freshman in high school. There you old. go. <laughs> yes, I, I'm like, <laughs> you know, may, maybe I'm just like Doogie, Doogie Hauser. I was, you know, I was like 12 in high school. You're you are only as old as you feel. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. I feel very old. Which is funny. I feel really old. Oh, but, imagine what you'll be like 10 years from now. I know. I'll be. In a wheelchair. I'll be in a hover round. I'll be in a hover round. You can make you appear depends. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. <laughs> I'll be a crotchety old lady, like trying to make horror films. Like, exactly. Yeah. 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 <laughs> That's my point. Uh, I can't wait to be old enough to be even meaner. <laughs> I can't imagine it's, you. You're, gonna, you're probably going to die. <laughs> it's going down. Uh huh. Well, I, I think oh, it's man. always good to end on, a, on an upbeat. <laughs> We've talked about death a couple of times, so hopefully this isn't an omen. <laughs> like, no, this is just our normal moody <laughs> banter. No, true, true. I forgot who I'm talking killing to. killing Neil. And... Mm-hmm. Yeah, it always comes down to Annabelle killing me. Or violence in general. <laughs> yes, or just beating that, me. Yes, yeah. Not always you know, death. that's probably how it's going to end for you. <laughs> She's actually going to kill you. Uh, well, we've already established <laughs> yeah. that we cannot go and see Edward Scissorhands because I'm not a big fan and she thinks that she would uh, actually kill me if I, I, I gave think it a better I, view. We've had some disagreements sometimes, and I, I, in jest, will talk about beating him mercilessly, uh-huh. but I have a soft spot for Ed, Edward Scissorhands and it is not a review we should do together. <laughs> like, you would kill him because he doesn't like it? <laughs> Cause he, not because he doesn't like it, but I know he'd be belligerent and insulting. <laughs> I, I uh, see, I see. That's kind of fun, though. I, I think people would like to see that. You die? I agree. <laughs> I think there's a good audience for it. It would uh-huh. be like that one movie with, uh, uh, I forgot who it was, but uh, the guy on the internet is killing people. It's like Saw, but it's all on the internet. Mm-hmm. And oh, the one with uh, Dee Schneider? No, no, no. No, but that sounds good, too. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I haven't seen that. That's, one of, that's one of my <laughs> mom's favorite movies. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, even, anyway, that's kind of what <laughs> it was. What it was to of. Somebody takes a bath in acid, and it always kind of freaks me out. Mm-hmm. That it's was always really a bad hurt. time. Oh. Mm-hmm. You're going to have to point me in the direction of that. That sounds gross and I'll, I'll, amazing. I'll, I'll look it up. I, I cannot. The name is slipping me right now. But yeah, that one part makes that whole movie worth it. I'm googling acid bath right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I yeah. There's an acid bath, and then somebody's hung by their toes, and some other shit. Yeah. Wow. It's good though. Yeah. I, I enjoy it. <laughs> Otherwise, like a... the movie's a uh, uh, crap. But uh-huh. it sounds like a typical weekend to me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, um, thank you so much for having me on. Uh, it's a lot of fun. Y'all rock. But I am, you, like, really I am in Miami yes. uh, at Art Basel. Are you guys uh, familiar with Art Basel? I am not. No. Uh, Annabelle? No. It's. Uh, uh, have either of you been to Florida before? I've been to Florida, but not East Coast Florida. Only been okay. on the old person West Coast Florida. Oh, I like the Panhandle. South, like Fort Myers area for the most part. Tampa. Uh, okay. Yeah, old, that is old person Florida. Is. Um, <laughs> um, well, Art Basel is like I'm pretty sure the largest art festival in the country, and it's just it's like mecca for artists. It's crazy. So I'm I'm here right now with with Morgan Wilson, the girl that painted the creature so it's gonna be fun awesome. <laughs> well, that yeah, great. how many days is that one fun. for uh i th- i think a week a solid week well i'm here for four days of it cool. so. so anybody in that area go check it out see blair yes. richardson mm-hmm. yeah 
Thanks so much. <laughs> if you come up to me on the street, of is it give me a high all five. kinds of different stuff? Is it like little old ladies knitting things and then H.R. Geiger? I, is it? I've, range? oh, I wish Geiger was here. Oh my God. Um, <laughs> no, I, I think it's, it's the whole city. I'm pre- I've never been. This is my first year, but I think it's the whole city and it's just like every type of art medium you can think of. Uh, I'm sure there are little old ladies knitting somewhere, um, but they're they're knitting like crazy shit, like uh, T Rex, you know, out of <laughs> wool or some shit. But um, no, it's just like all these open galleries and parties every night, and this art, 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 so much art that you'll choke on it. It's just crazy. That sounds like an incredible time. Mm-hmm. I would yeah, I think it like and very I, much. I just. Yeah, I just got back from Los Angeles yesterday, and now I'm in Miami. So it's it's been nonstop. Jet center. <laughs> Excellent. Well, Thanks. thank you again for coming on, and uh, we're going to play you, some uh, Dead you, Dick Hammer. Absolutely. Stay in touch with us about right. your stuff. Let us know when it's uh, public release. Absolutely. All right. Have a good night, y'all. You too. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. We'll be right back after some Dead Dick Hammer. Hey, it's Joel David Moore, and you're listening to WithoutYourHead.com.